say first off i want to say thanks for all of you guys out there who bought the diffuser from me uh really i did not expect that good of a response now this video is about a modification to the eastwood that i just kind of briefly touched on i want to go into detail with you about it and it has to do with the input tube that charges this with pressurized air now what this has to do with is cut down on the surging possibilities that could happen when air pressure is introduced into this container uh, on the bottom of all that powder. Now, you remember these two little holes I talked about, okay? Mixing holes, you know, inside of the chamber. Well, here's the thing with those. You only need two. Now, I did not say anything about it. I didn't elaborate at all on this, okay? You only need two of them. Okay, not four. In other words, don't drill all the way through this tube. You would take too much pressure away from the air coming out of the bottom. So anyway, uh, I taped this off so you can better see it. It didn't show up very well on the camera last time because, well, it's black and black just doesn't show up well on cameras or film. Or, well, we don't even use film anymore. You know what I mean. So anyway, I put this masking tape on here. Now, I wanna go over the dimensions with you. You can easily do this mod at home. Okay? It's, it's probably one of the easiest ones to do. Now, get you a scale or a ruler. I call them scales. You're gonna measure. Now, go ahead and put some tape on there first. You're gonna measure from the bottom up to here three inches. Go a quarter inch above three inches and a quarter inch below three inches and make two marks. That's where you're going to drill your holes at, your eighth inch holes, by the way, for this guy right here. Now, something else. If you notice, these sit 30 degrees off to one side. All right. Now, this happens to be to the left side you can drill them to the right side. It makes no difference. 30 degrees, for those of you who don't understand a degree wheel, the zero to 360, it's really easy. Just imagine a clock on the wall, okay? 30 degrees is one o'clock, all right? Three o'clock would be 90 degrees. Six o'clock would be 180, okay? You see where I'm going with this? So anyway, one o'clock is off from center is where you want to drill these holes three inches up, okay? Uh, just take a center punch and support this tube on something. It is plastic, it will break. Uh, it's pretty durable plastic, but still, you know, don't no sledgehammers involved, all right? Uh, but Put your marks there, go back, center punch, eighth inch drill, bam, bam. Okay, that's done. Deburr it, there's gonna be some burrs there. Go ahead and get rid of those. And that will definitely cause a vortex inside of this, okay, and help that mix. The better you get that, the better you get those powder molecules separated from each other and then going down the tube, the output tube, uh, the best it is to cover your part in a more even fashion. That's what you're shooting for here. You don't want clumps here and here and you know some over here. You want everything evenly dispersed. Now, you really can't see this with your eyes. The more evenly those particles are separated from one another, the better finish you're going to get on the finished product, okay, after it comes out of the oven. Uh, I, I used to get a lot of um, orange peel, uh, especially with the Harbor Freight. Now, I don't really know if that had anything to do with the mixing part. Um, I do think, well, the Eastwood is, you know, a better gun. But, yeah, it, it costs more too. I mean, duh. It's, yeah, it's going to be better. At least that's what I've been finding out about uh, a lot of shop equipment. Um, the more you pay for it, the 
you know, the better it's going to be, all right? But anyway, we'll just leave that one alone. If you've enjoyed this video so far, please hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, and go ahead and hit that notification bell so you'll know when my next video is coming out. And I really appreciate you guys watching. Now, uh, next week I'm going to be changing things up a little bit. We're going to the Harbor Freight and making modifications on it, all right? And I've got some really good ideas. I've worked with one of those for two and a half years. So I know the Harbor Freight pretty well. And I'll be going into that pretty in depth. Uh, it, it's like this. It's probably going to be a couple of videos, maybe three, maybe more than that. Uh, I'm definitely going to design a different diffuser for it. Just basically like this. At really exactly like this. Uh, the dimensions are going to be different. Uh, they have to be. You can't use this on the Harbor Freight. It, it won't fit is the reason why. So uh, as far as this part goes, well, that's still cooking up in here. Um, I, I can make some changes on that on the Harbor Freight, but I'll, that'll be in the other videos, and you know we'll get to that when the time comes. There are a lot of Harbor Freights out there, and actually they're good guns, okay? They're good to start off with. I used one for two and a half years, and I would not have bought this one if my Harbor Freight hadn't went down, okay? Because I've learned to use it. I've learned its little uh, inconsistencies, I guess you could say. So, I'll see you guys next week. Hope you enjoyed the video, and bye.